Oh, hey, I thought I'd see you around here because this is a video that you're going to want to stick around for if you'd like to achieve editing your digital photographs to look and feel dreamy like that of film photography. Now I get it, back in 2009, whenever I first began my career, I was a single mom, I was broke and I was in college and I just dreamed of being successful. But most importantly, I wanted to be artistically fulfilled. I wanted to master the thing that I was so passionate about. And so I've spent 15 years mastering this process of making my digital photographs have the look that is soft and dreamy and true to life. And so at the end of this video, you're gonna be that much closer to getting your hands on that process and mastering it yourself. And I have to tell you, building a thriving business and mastering your craft is possible. To be at this place today where I have multi six figure business is surreal. And I've helped hundreds of other photographers build their own thriving businesses too. And if you'd like to be one of those transformations, be sure to click the link in the description because I have a free training that gives you the four steps to do just that for yourself. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into this epic film versus digital challenge. All right, so here we are. What do you think it is? Which one is film? Which one is digital? I'm going to tell you here in just a moment, but as you're taking it in and trying to see which is which, because hey, this is a pretty dang good match if I can say so myself, I'll go ahead and tell you that one was taken on the Contact 645 film camera and the other was taken on the Fujifilm GFX 100, which is a digital camera. All right. Now, are you ready? Drum roll, please. All right. The one on the left is the digital, I almost got it wrong myself, the one on the left is digital, the one on the right is film, all right? So let's go ahead, let's come back to our digital photograph here, and we are going to reset, because I know some of you like to see the before and the after of the digital as well, which is myself included, so this may be a thing I just like to see here, but here's the before and after, okay, of the digital image. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I was able to get it so soft and so dreamy, okay? Now, let's go ahead and reset, get it right back to the original. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use some of my presets. They are the effortless editing presets and you can go ahead and click the link in the description if you'd like to get your hand on those. Now, these are designed for outdoor and I think I am going to lean more towards the midday perfecter. And one thing that I like to do as I am editing is I will hold command down on the keyboard and click the image I'd like to compare side by side. When I hit C, that is the shortcut for compare, okay? And so the one on the right is the film image and the one on the left is the digital image. And so what I'm trying to do is to match the colors, the skin tone, the way the lips look, every single detail in terms of color to be that of the film, because that is what film is so popular for. It is the color. Now, when we're looking at the depth of field and some texture elements, that is going to dip more into the lens. Um, but for today, this was 80 millimeter Carl Zeiss lens. This is a 63 millimeter um, Fujinon lens here, which um, is not an exact replica, of course, because one is a longer focal length, but it is still going to be really, really close. What it would have even given us a closer match is if I would use a filter, is if I would use a filter and put the Carl, the 80 millimeter Carl Zeiss lens on the Fujifilm camera. Now we'd really be talking, okay? But this is what I do. I like to go back and forth when I'm trying to match. Once I have all of the, once I have this image matched, I can then copy my settings on this photograph and put it on all of the other images in a similar lighting scenario to shortcut my editing time. Now I'll show you how I do that at the end of the video. For now, we're gonna move over into develop and we're gonna go ahead, we have the preset on. And so first thing I can see right off the bat is that I'm going to need to increase the exposure, okay? Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pull down the highlights and I'm also going to pull down the whites a bit here because if we're looking at right here on her face, there are like these really hot spots and it's pretty bright in comparison. It's kind of shiny, right? And I really don't want that to stand out. So I'm going to minimize the amount that I am uh, allowing it to show. 
And so by doing that, I'm pulling down the highlights, I'm pulling down the whites. Those are the specific areas that are showcasing those really light areas. And I wanna preserve those details, okay? Now I'm also going to come down to the oranges and I'm just gonna bump out the saturation here of the orange by negative 10. And then I'm also gonna bring up the luminescence which is essentially saying everything that is orange in this photograph, I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. So that's gonna be mostly her skin, okay? And so now if I do command select my film image, C to compare, now I can see where we're at with things. And it looks like to the left, I am showcasing more magenta than I am to the right. I can also see the blue sky is a little bit different. I can also see in the skin, there's a little bit more yellow and not so orange. So really kind of going back and paying really close, close attention to skin tone and um, really colors all throughout the image to see what can I see that is a little bit different and how can I bring the two together? So one thing that I can tell is that the blue is pulled a little bit this way, the hue is, and I forget what they call this, uh, a little bit more towards the green, I would say. I also can tell that the orange is pulled a little bit towards the yellow, just a pinch. So I'm at plus three now. And I can also see that the pinks and the reds, the magentas are really showing up a little bit more in the film. So I'm gonna bring the saturation up for those reds so that those are starting to pop just a little bit more. And now that I'm here, I'm also gonna come back to that blue. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the blues are a little bit brighter in that sky than, than what they were there a moment. So just bringing up that luminescence in the blue to match the brightness of the sky here in the film image, and then coming back to compare, okay? So we are getting a lot closer to our final look, but as we can see, there's still warmth in magenta. So let's go ahead and fix that here. And so this is what I do. I just kind of go back and forth. Now for settings, we can pause for a moment. We can see ISO is 125. The f-stop is 2.8. And the shutter is 2,000 2, thousandth of a second. All right. So really allowing the camera to um, take in as much light as possible through the lens itself with a fast shutter to expose accurately for that harsh light on her skin, all right? Because we do want it to still be soft and dreamy with a beautiful depth of field. So therefore we want an open aperture, right? Now, coming back to that warmth and that magenta that we wanna pull out, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a little bit of magenta and a little bit of warmth. And I think we're getting pretty dang close. I need to go ahead and compare again, okay? Now we're pretty, we're getting there. When you say, hey, we are getting there. And this is so dang close, we could almost stop here. But I'm gonna show you a few more things that I see that personally would drive me crazy, okay? And that is, if we zoom on in here, we can see there's these shiny elements on her face. And I don't really like to showcase a lot of shiny spots on the face. And so I'm just going to very minimally um, edit this out just a little bit, okay? Now we are gonna have to be careful because there is netting. And so I am aware for this specific edit that it will likely not be 100% accurate with the mesh. And I am perfectly fine with that because I care more that we don't have a really shiny spot on her nose. Okay, and if I have to kind of try a few different spots, that's fine with me. And so as I start to do this, I can see other little red spots start to show up. And, and so I will do my part to edit that out so that it's not as visible in here before and after. Just this little area here. Also, if I'm looking here, hitting Q is the shortcut for the heel tool. And so that will allow that shortcut to just pop right up Having keyboard shortcuts will save you so much time in the long run. And so Q is a shortcut again for heel, okay? Now you can see here that her skin is looking a good bit smoother there. And one thing that I like to do is I'll come down to the history 
and I'll just kind of find where I was before I started using the heel tool. And I can see if you watch, let me zoom in here. If you're watching her nose and her cheek and I go to currently how it is, you can see now it's much, much softer and, uh, uh, there's no distractions. You know, our focus is going right into her beautiful eyes. Now I am going to go ahead and bring up the shadows because let me go ahead and compare, make sure that you guys can see it as well. If we hold the compare and we're just looking at the shadows. So the darker areas of the image, I can see that on the right, which is our film image, her skin is brighter in comparison to her hair. Whereas on the, on the left, it's a little bit, um, softer, uh, and the hair is a little bit, um, brighter, not a huge difference, but this is going to help us, um, create the same pop in the digital image on the skin as the one on the right, which is the film. Okay. So let's go ahead with our digital image and pull up the shadows a good bit here. And then I'm also just going to pull down the blacks because those are the fine details. And I don't want to lose the contrast that we had with the shadows. I want to just simply make it softer. So by pulling up the shadows, I'm softening the contrast, but yet maintaining the strong defining parameters that are actually the black tones, which would be between her lips, where her not, her nose makes the crease, the line between her eyes, um, where the jawline is, all of these really fine lines, that is where when you pull down the blacks, it's going to be impacted the most. And so keeping that definition allows the image to still remain really clear and to hold its, its look of being in focus and to have strong clarity. All right. So again, if we just are looking back and forth with the compare tool here, we can see that we are pretty dang close. And I think at this point, the only thing that I would really worry about changing is honestly just the background. And I see a little bit of red on her nose. And that is me being the perfectionist that I am. So with the blue, I'm going to bring it more towards the green. I'm also going to bring up the luminescence of it and pull down the saturation. And that should do it to match the other one, uh, the film image. And then right here, I can, this is something I wouldn't do it to all images, but if I'm going to put this in my portfolio, I will fix these little things that maybe only I see. But I do think that at the end of the day, whenever it comes to um, being a high-end photographer, taking that extra step in your editing will pay off. It is the difference in the expert and the amateur, all right? So you can see it in a portfolio, it stands out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the magenta and a little bit of saturation there on her nose. Um, and I'm also bringing up the exposure and maybe even adding a little bit of warmth. And so if we come back before, you can see that it was a little bit more red. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a little bit more pink here, a little bit more of that magenta. All right, and that'll do it. Fantastic, beautiful. Okay, so now that we are here, I'm gonna call this one done. I might bump up the exposure a little bit. Let's see, pull down the whites. I think that's pretty good. I'm actually gonna come down. Yeah, I think that's great. All right, let's do a good old compare. Whoops, wrong one. And there you have it. Here is our before and our after of matching digital to film. Now, one thing that I wanna show you really quick that I promised that I would show you is, here's another photograph um, that was taken at that same location, same time, you know, different set of images. This one is, these are also. Um, and so what I can do now that I have um, matched this one to the film is if I come over to develop module, I can hit copy and simply I can hit shift and, you know, uh, select a variety of images. So I could select if it was 20 images all in that same location, same setting, same lighting scenario, I could simply come over here and hit paste. And all of those images now are edited to match film. And it saves me the time. Of course, I have to come in and tweak things a little bit here and there. But now these photographs all have the same edits put on them. And the beautiful part is it's gonna save me so much time. 
which is what I am all about. If you can edit images with consistency and speed, then you have a recipe for success. And there you have it, digital match and film. Who would have thought? Now, if you are wanting to build a thriving business, don't forget to be sure to click the link in the description. There's that free training just for you, revealing the path forward. And be sure to like and subscribe because, hey, we got new videos coming out all the time and you're gonna miss it. You don't wanna miss it. So be sure to like and subscribe. So much more gold coming your way. Let me know your biggest takeaways in the comments. It's my love language. I wanna hear from you, I wanna to talk to you, and I wanna know what you want to see from us next because you are the reason behind the why of this channel is to see you thrive. All right, my friend, love and adore you. I can't wait to see you on the next one.